If you're a person that's always angry, then it's likely that you're going to just be dismissed as hot-tempered and issues that actually require seriousness and anger aren't going to be taken seriously from you anymore because people are just used to you being angry all the time. But when you're cheerful in nature, then your anger is significant because people know that you're not angry over petty things. And that's why they have the saying in the Arabic language, الحليم, fear the anger of the one who's typically forbearing because that's when you know that you've crossed a serious line because that's not a person that typically gets mad. One of the signs of the hypocrite that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned is وَإِذَا خَاصَمَ فَجَرْ that when they get into an argument, they become belligerent. They always transgress in the midst of an argument. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the worst of people are those who people don't even advise anymore because they don't want to deal with their fuhush. They don't want to deal with their nastiness, right? When someone is so hot-tempered and it's expected that anything is going to set them off, then eventually people see them go into a fit of rage and it's like, you know what, I'm just going to let that person finish and we're not going to even try correcting them anymore. No one give that person nasiha anymore. No one give that person advice. No one try to challenge them anymore. No one try to rectify them. And so in the process, they make everything around them unpleasant and they hurt themselves because they become less self-aware because no one's even making them aware anymore of the way that they're behaving. And that's why Ali radiallahu ta'ala, I know he has a powerful saying. He says about al-ghadab, he says about anger. He says, awaluhu junoon wa akhiruhu nadam. That the beginning of it is craziness and the end of it is regret. People that go into these fits of anger, may Allah help all of those that are sincerely trying to overcome a hot temper, but people go into fits of anger, they start off crazy and they end off regretful. So when you look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was never fahish, he was never foul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was never angry over worldly things. He was never one that would denigrate other people. He was never one that would become nasty sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the midst of his anger. Instead, we see that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his anger was composed and it was for the right reasons. Because if you're angry for Allah, you can't have the manners of shaitan for a righteous cause, right? If you're angry for Allah, then your anger has to abide by the principles that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. And this is the way of the prophets, right? You look at Musa alayhi salam when he found his people worshiping the calf. You look at Isa alayhi salam, Jesus peace be upon him, with the money changers in the temple. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to say very beautifully, Allahumma inni as'aluka kalimat al-haqq fi al-ridha wal ghadab. Oh Allah, I ask you for the ability to speak a word of truth in times of pleasure and in times of anger. Why? Because sometimes when you get into anger, you're no longer driving your own personality, but instead you're letting someone else take over you. And the Prophet Sallallahu is saying, get back to the truth, get back to the haq, because that's what it's supposed to be about in the first place. And that's how the Prophet Sallallahu grounded himself. So what did it look like when the Prophet Sallallahu got anger? وَمَنْ تَقَمَ لِنَفْسِهِ Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says, and there are other Sahaba as well that narrate this, he never got angry for himself sallallahu alayhi wa sallam illa an tuntahaka hurmatullahi azza wa jal except that the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were violated, were undertaken. So once you cross the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yantaqimu lillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would get angry for Allah. And that can be very hard to see from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because again, it wasn't his norm. Usam ibn Zayd radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was so beloved to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says that when I killed a man in battle and that man said la ilaha illallah right before I killed him. And I thought to myself that he probably just said la ilaha illallah just to escape death. When I told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about that, he was so upset with me saying to me, did you check his heart, O Usama? He said he was so upset with me that I had wished I hadn't become Muslim before that day. Meaning I wish that I could just take Shahada that day and do away with everything before that. You have the story of the young man that came to the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to ask about his habits. And when they found that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sleeps at night sometimes, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is intimate with his spouses, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam eats food, he doesn't fast all day. These three young men, they walked away and they said, well, he's the Prophet of God, we have to do more than him. So they took these oaths on themselves that I'm going to fast and not break my fast, that I'm going to stay awake the entire night and pray, that I'm going to not get married because intimacy is somehow a mark, it's a taint. And 
When the Prophet Sallallahu heard about this, the Prophet Sallallahu was upset. He said, who are these people? And he said to them in anger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that look, I am the Prophet of Allah. No one is going to exceed me in religiosity, but I observe prayer and then I sleep. I observe fasting and then I break my fast and I'm intimate with my spouses and whoever turns away from my sunnah is not from me. So that's when the Prophet Sallallahu would become upset when people would exceed the boundaries of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and risk corrupting or polluting the religion in the first place. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu also would not tolerate people belittling others because that's also the sanctity of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala because Allah has sanctified the dignity and the honor of your brothers and sisters. And so when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sees the companions and they make fun of the legs of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu because of how skinny they were, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam becomes extremely upset in defending Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu and saying, you're laughing at those two legs and I've seen each one of them the size of Uhud on the day of judgment. Those are legs of power. Those are legs of honor in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or the famous story of Abu Dharr radiallahu ta'ala anhu saying, Ya ibn Sauda, saying, you son of a black woman. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saying to Abu Dharr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, did you insult him using his mom? Did you insult him using his mom? And you are a person that still has some of the days of ignorance inside of you, some of jahiliya inside of you. So that's also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam seeing that the sacred boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have been crossed. But subhanAllah, it's really interesting that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she narrates the time that the Prophet sallallahu got really, really, really upset. She says that it was in regards to Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to always mention Khadija as if there was no one else in the world but Khadija. And she had already passed away and I never even met her, but he loved her so much that anytime Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha was brought up, anytime he saw some of her friends, he sent gifts to them. Anytime the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard the voice of Hala, her sister, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahumma Hala, Allahumma Hala, oh Allah, let it be Hala, oh Allah, let it be Hala. So she says that one day I said to the Prophet Sallallahu as he was mentioning Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, I said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, why are you caught up on an old toothless woman from Quraysh, abdalak Allahu khayram minha, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given you better than her. And she knew that she crossed the line. She said that the Prophet Sallallahu stood up, his face became red alayhi salatu was salam, that vein that would come out from his forehead Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came out when he was angry and it looked like his hair stood up Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because of how upset he was at what she had said about Khadija. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, I swear that Allah has not given me better than her. And he started to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Amanat bi idh kafara bi nas She believed in me when others disbelieved in me. She considered me truthful when others called me a liar. She spent on me when others deprived me. And Allah gave me children through her and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given me children through anyone else. Wallahi ma baddalani Allahu khayra minha. Allah has not given me better than her. And Aisha radiallahu anha said, Ya Rasulullah, forgive me. And I will never talk about Khadija again. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi forgave her. And subhanAllah, you note here, that this was the angriest that she had seen the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he could have denigrated her. He could have put her down. Instead, what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? He extolled Khadija Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha. Instead of mentioning the inferiority of Aisha, he focused on the superiority of Khadija because this was not about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and this was not about putting someone down. But instead, this was upholding that which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had honored. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would get upset. <laughs> صلى الله عليه وسلم <تصفيق>